So I'm Larry Goldstein. I'm Distinguished Professor of Cellular and Molecular Medicine and Distinguished Professor of Neurosciences. I'm Director of the UC San Diego Stem Cell Program. I'm Chair of the Scientific Steering Committee at the Sanford Consortium for Regenerative Medicine, and I'm a practicing stem cell scientist. The current problem is that Alzheimer's disease is a very common disease. 10% of people over 65 50% of people over 85, and we have no drugs that change the course of the disease once it's diagnosed. It's a terrible problem. It's economically devastating, it's emotionally devastating, and it will bankrupt the United States healthcare system unless we find a solution. At present, our pipeline of potential drugs is not nearly large enough to satisfy what will be a growing demand for effective therapeutics. And so the problem is, how do you go about finding a drug for a disease of the human brain and that uniquely affects humans? Mice don't really get Alzheimer's disease. Fruit flies don't really get Alzheimer's disease. And so our traditional work with so-called animal versions or animal models of Alzheimer's disease, while very useful for understanding principles, haven't thus far led us to effective human therapeutics. And I have to confess, I'm not wildly optimistic about their prospects. And so I'm very worried that unless we do something new and different, we will not have the drugs we need for Alzheimer's disease in the next five or 10 years. And that's a terrible and difficult problem. What we've tried to do is to develop a system for studying Alzheimer's disease and testing potential drugs that will be superior to or complementary to what is currently done with animal models. And so to do that, what we've taken advantage of is a new technique only developed in the past few years called cellular reprogramming. And in essence, what that does is to take a skin sample from a person with Alzheimer's disease, either a rare hereditary form or the more common so-called sporadic form, and then using fancy genetic trickery we induce those cells to behave like embryonic stem cells. They're not identical to embryonic stem cells, but they're very similar in that they'll grow indefinitely under simple conditions in the lab, and they retain the ability to make all adult cell types, including human brain cells. And so what this lets us do is to take skin cells from an Alzheimer's disease patient and ultimately make brain cells that have all the genetic variation and genetic changes that contribute to that patient's development of disease. And so with Alzheimer's disease brain cells in a dish in the lab, we can ask, how do those human brain cells that have the genetic changes that will cause or contribute to Alzheimer's disease, how do they behave in a way that is different from normal brain cells? And what we discovered is that there are telltale biochemical changes known to be important in the development of Alzheimer's disease that occur in these brain cells in a dish. And this is very important, we believe, because it will let us in a manipulable system that we can work with in the lab on a daily basis, probe what goes wrong in those cells and test drugs, and we hope develop drugs that will more rapidly deal with the devastating consequences of this disorder.